Hello, digital artists. Let's take a look at shapes in Photopea and all of the different things that we can do with them. So I'm going to go to a new project. Uh, I am going to leave it at its 1280 by 720 pixels, 72 DPI is fine, white background is fine. I don't need anything specific for this ex exercise. So over here, um, you have your shape um, tools and probably it's going to look like a rectangle first, which we um, did for our very first exercise, which was to drop in uh, some rectangles and your default color up here at that point was red. Um, so it probably looked like that. And that's great. We got some practice making rectangles. We got some practice submitting a file. We're going to look at a lot more options in regards to your shapes. But before I leave off of the rectangle shape, I'm going to redirect you back up to where it says fill. And we're going to talk about this dialogue a little bit, this dialogue box, excuse me. So when you ever you see the white box with the red X, that means that it's going to create an empty shape. There will be nothing on the inside. If that's what you want, then you want the red X. If you want to fill it with a solid color, then you want this second box here. And that color is going to change depending on whatever it is that you want to make it. But um, remember that you're choosing the type here, not the color. So if you don't want a solid color, you want a gradient instead, then you will choose the third one. And here's where you can pick your options like your colors. You can um, choose these colors here at the bottom, or you can choose if you want a radial gradient or a linear one or an angle one. I'm going to stick with uh, linear. When you when we did the top of your hamburger and we chose the radial, that's when we adjusted the X and Y axis a little bit to change the angle, um, make it look like it was shining light from a certain direction, but I'm just going to keep it on linear for now. And then this last one is if you want to do a rectangle that is filled with a pattern. And there's not a ton of patterns available here. Um, there's not really many at all, but you can play with this if you want to. The point of this uh, entire exercise is just to look at what your options are and how to get out of there, how to find them if that's what you want. Okay, so moving on. The next thing we're going to find here is the stroke. Stroke essentially means outline. So if I don't want an outline at all, of course, you're going to go with the white box and the red X. This will give you a black outline or any other color that you might want to choose. If you are going to have a really thick outline that maybe you want a gradient, and I can't think of any examples on what, when you would want that, but that option is there. And of course, the pattern as well. Next to that is going to be the size of your stroke. Let's make this black so that you can see clearly as I increase that size, it gets a lot thicker or it can get very thin. Um, I just want it thick enough that you can see because you've got that blue line and I want you to see the black. All right, so moving across, let's say you were doing a line instead of a rectangle. Click there. This is going to give you options like, do you want the end of your line to be a cutoff, like flat, square, um, effect here. Do you want it to be rounded? Do you want the anchor point of your line to sit on the actual end or inside just a little bit? So if you draw your line here, you can see that that is a flat um, end right there, as opposed to if I choose this one. Let's see if I can zoom in. So it's hard to see, I might have to zoom in some more, but you can barely make out, if I can get out of this dialog box. And shift this right above here. You can barely make out that there is a slight curve here as opposed to that harsh corner there. Okay, so backing out and going back to my shape options. I am on rectangle. All right, so if I click a free, that's going to allow me to stretch it as I want. If I click a fixed ratio, it's going to give me a square. No matter where I drag my mouse, it will be a perfect square. Um, and then that is going to give me this, a fixed size, just as it says, that I can move around. And with a fixed size, you can go in here and 
be very specific about what size you want. And it'll give you one that's to that specification. So corner radius is set at zero, which means it's going to be a, a hard corner as opposed to a rectangle that you wanted a softer um, look on your edges. You can make it a corner that is rounded. You can make it a corner that is really rounded. Oops. Why did that? There we go. Um, and you can adjust those. So there are my rectangles and all of those actions have created layers. So I've got quite quite the list over here. Now in the past, we have taken any layer that has this little box on it and we have right click and rasterized. Here's where I'm gonna explain a little bit about what that does. Everything so far, we have created data on how exactly that, that line or that rectangle is formed. Rasterizing that is going to basically change it from an item that has data on its shape and just turn it into flat pixels. And the reason we've done that in the past is so that we could fill it with a color or a gradient or something to that effect um, where we didn't use, where we didn't plan it out at first. Um, but if you wanted to fill it using the paint bucket or do some other like the eraser tool, um, things like that, then you would need to rasterize. So I don't particularly want to rasterize. I don't even really want to keep all of this right now. So I'm going to shift and highlight all of this drag it all to the trash can, and we're gonna to move to a different shape. As you move into a different shape, a lot of these are gonna stay the same. Some of them will change, obviously, because you're not going to have like corner options for an ellipse. An ellipse is essentially an oval, which can be a circle, doesn't have to be a, a circle. But as I click and drag, it can come out really fat and skinny, tall and skinny. Uh, you can make a true circle out of it and it's gonna fill in the same way. Now, there is a shortcut for getting a perfect circle, a keyboard shortcut, and that is to hold shift and drag. And now you can't make an oval, it's gonna keep it a circle. So if you wanted a perfect um, height width, same dimension uh, circle, then you would hold shift and drag to get what you want. Okay, moving on. Um, I'm not going to go over the line much because we talked about that a little bit, the cap options. Um, you can adjust your width. That one's pretty simple, but I am going to go to the parametric shape and let's get rid of our ellipses here before we move into the parametric shape. Uh, but up here, you're going to see the star is selected. Let's start with a polygon and it has a red fill. I'm just gonna do a little bit of planning here because I don't want a red fill. I like that color. And we will do a thin black outline. Come over here to actual black, okay. Oops. Let's see. Why am I still making circles? Oh, I'm not. Okay, so here's what's happening. I'll move this back to the center so that I can show you. I am making a polygon, but the corner radius is so rounded, it's set to so many pixels, that on that small version of it, it's nothing but corners, which are very round. So if I bring that back to something that is much smaller, then you can see the um, polygon shape at a much smaller size. And I can change the sides to have a lot more. Um, we'll put that down to just two, so that, that is pretty sharp. And you can see how that would look there. What else should I change here? We can go back to polygon and make it a star. And this, I really enjoy playing with. Let's change the color here so that it stands out a bit. I'm gonna pick like an orange, I think. All right, so let's talk about this star. First of all, it has 16 sides. Um, if you wanted to make your traditional five-pointed star, 
um, here is where you would adjust that. But I really like this kind of sunburst star looking thing here. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the inner radius here, which is 50. Now the inner radius refers to how far in all of these interior points come. And if I'm going to make this Twenty-five. Watch how it changes. Okay, now it comes in much smaller. The actual sun part of the sunburst is much more dramatic, which makes these look much spikier. So um, now the outline is getting to be kind of distracting, so I'm going to get rid of that. Oops. And you can see how that changes to be just the orange star without the black around it. Maybe I'll leave that right there. All right, what other kind of stars can we do? We'll change this to less sides. Eight would be fine. Um, we can raise the corner radius to 30. And now you can see how that changes. So there's a lot of adjustments that you can do to exact to get exactly what kind of star you're looking for. All right, last one we're going to go over is a spiral. And I always love the fact that you could just like drag and create a spiral. I don't want it to be orange, though. I think I want this one to be black. And I am going to pick up my move tool and slide that right there. Um, and you, of course, you've got the same options for fill and for our stroke that you want, you can increase the length of your spiral and see how that changes. So there's a lot that you can do to create exactly what you want. All right, and that is essentially um, the overview on how to create shapes, adjust shapes, um, and just kind of play around with it. So I want to see what you can do. Experiment, um, try different things, save a couple different things if you like them. Um, try not to lock any layers unless you're like you're done and you want to save the JPEG and the PSD. Always remember to do both, one for me, one for you, so that you don't lose the opportunity to continue your work and you submit something that I can see. All right, happy creating.